There's an old British nursery rhyme that goes, if you go down to the woods today, you're sure of a big surprise. The nursery rhyme is correct. You can never be sure of what you might find if you venture into the world's forests. You might stumble across a hidden piece of modern technology or an ancient abandoned city. We'll be looking at some truly bizarre forest finds in this video. Let's start in Bellevue, Colorado, USA, where the wreckage of an old World War II bomber hides among the trees high in the mountains. To access this B-17 bomber, you'll need to hike for six miles, so you have to really want to get there. The plane left Rapid City, South Dakota on a training flight on June 13, 1944. Nobody's 100% sure why it crashed, but this part of northern Colorado is notorious among pilots for its unpredictable and rapidly changing wind and weather conditions. A rookie pilot could easily have been caught off guard by a sudden and violent change in the wind, and so that may explain what the bomber is doing here. Only six of the ten people aboard the plane survived the crash. The plane was almost torn to pieces, but if you search around the crash site, you'll find large sections of the wings and almost the entire engine. The site has become so popular with hikers that there are even B-17 tags attached to some of the trees to reassure tourists that they're on the right track as they approach it. Monarch Butterfly Grove in Pismo Beach, California, USA is exactly what it sounds like. It's a place where you'll find thousands of migrating monarch butterflies congregating together among the eucalyptus trees, creating a visual unlike anything else on Earth. The butterflies come to this part of the Santa Maria Valley to escape the cold of the northern winter and then cluster together in dense packs, creating the appearance of whole curtains of bright orange that covers areas of several feet at a time. From a distance, they almost look like orange leaves. Most of the butterflies that can be found here each winter come from the west of the Rocky Mountains, meaning that they'll have traveled more than 1,000 miles by the time they arrive. Getting too close to the butterflies isn't encouraged, but there are telescopes available around the fringes of the grove so visitors can get a good look at them without disturbing them. The best time to visit Monarch Butterfly Grove is between November and January each year, after which the butterflies leave and begin their journey home. Heading back to Colorado from California, we find the Breckenridge Troll in, appropriately enough, the forests of Breckenridge. Most trolls don't have names, but this one is called Isaac Hartstone. He's 15 feet tall and he's entirely made out of recycled materials. You'd think that being 15 feet tall would make him easy to find, but he's partially obscured by the Breckenridge Ice Rink, so you have to know where you're looking in order to find him. He hasn't always been there. When he was first built, he was on the side of Breck Mountain. The sheer number of people who came to visit him after he was erected in 2017 was causing damage to the mountainside, so he was moved to a safer location. The sculpture is the work of the Danish artist and environmental activist Tomas Dambo, who was in town as part of the 2017 Breckenridge International Festival of Arts. When he had to come back to move his creation in 2019, he kept the original head, hands, feet, and heart, but gave him a new body. Further examples of sculpture work by Dambo can be found in his home country of Denmark, as well as Belgium and several other European nations. We're flitting between Colorado and California thus far in this video, and our second trip to California takes us to the Roberts House in Malibu, designed by Paul Williams. He was the first certified African-American architect west of the Mississippi, and in 1952, he was commissioned by Fred and Florence Roberts to build them a Polynesian-style home. By the time he was done, he'd created a home so stunning that it was featured in Architectural Digest. This part of Malibu is notorious for its high fire risk, so Fred Roberts asked Williams to include a fire protection system and build the house only from fire-resistant materials. Williams included an array of pipes, pumps, water collection pools, and other safety features, but even that wasn't enough to save it from the enormous wildfire that broke out in 1982. By the time the fire had burned its way from the canyon to the ocean, 
All that was left of the house was its bomb shelter, foundations, studio room, and, irony of ironies, four fireplaces. What's left of the formerly beautiful home now belongs to the Santa Monica Mountains Conservatory, and has been open to the public since 1988. Our next find isn't actually one that was discovered inside a forest. Instead, it's the forest itself. We're talking about the Petrified Forest National Park in Holbrook, Arizona, USA. The park features the biggest collection of petrified wood and trees in the world, and also contains incredibly rare and valuable fossils, some of which are 200 million years old. So much time has passed since the trees grew that they've now turned to stone. The park is enormous, covering 150 square miles and touching on the edge of the Painted Desert. Scientists say that back in the Mesozoic era, the forest's location was close to the equator in the middle of the supercontinent called Pangaea. It would have enjoyed a subtropical climate, thus explaining why there were so many trees in a part of the world that's now a dry desert. It's a place on Earth like no other and attracts a lot of wild campers even though camping in the petrified forest is legally prohibited. Instead, visitors are asked to stay in the nearby hotels and only enter the forest as part of an approved guided tour. The largest self-built castle in the United States of America is in the forests of Rye, Colorado. It's called Bishop Castle, and it took six decades to complete the project. The man behind the castle is Jim Bishop, who was told that he would never amount to anything when he dropped out of school at the age of 15. Determined to prove his teachers wrong, Bishop bought a plot of land for $450 in the San Isabel National Forest. In 1969, he decided to build himself a home there. It started as a single-room stone cottage, but Jim just couldn't stop building, and he eventually created the world's largest one-man architecture project. Today, Bishop Castle is 16 stories high and has three cathedral windows and a fire-breathing dragon made of solid steel, with the towers of the castle connected to each other by wrought iron walkways. Jim considers his castle to be a work of art and has noted with amusement that when you call something art, you get to dismiss any mistakes you make as part of the artistic process. Jim Bishop is now in his late 70s, but rumor has it he still hasn't stopped building. The Ronning Burl in Port McNeil, British Columbia, Canada, is home to the largest tree burl in the world. We know that at least some of you are now wondering what a tree burl is, so we'll tell you. A burl is, to all intents and purposes, a tumor that grows on a tree. They'll take the shape of massive bulbous growths on the side of a tree's trunk. Most of them are little bigger than a human fist, but the Ronning Burl is colossal. It's 20 feet tall, 20 feet wide, and weighs about 30 tons. The burl grew on the side of a tall Sitka spruce tree on Vancouver Island, but was removed in 2005 so it could be placed on display on the Port McNeil waterfront. This used to be a hub for logging operations back in the 1930s, so it's an appropriate location for the burl. Amazingly, the world's second largest tree burl is also in Port McNeil, that one also grew on the side of a Sitka spruce and was cut down in 1976. All of the other large tree burls in the world come from giant redwoods, so the fact that these two behemoths didn't makes them all the more unique. Next up, we have the strange carved rocks of Los Alamos in New Mexico. The delicately carved boulders stand in the middle of a canyon forest and have been said by some to look almost like model villages. The lines in the boulders can be interpreted as streets, some of which even appear to have terraces. It's as if someone used the boulders to sketch out a city plan thousands of years ago, and for all we know, that's precisely what happened. The carved rocks are under-researched by archaeologists and remain unexplained, even though their existence has been known of since 1946. That was the year that they were discovered by a local school teacher, who went on to write about them in a local newspaper. The teacher believed that the rocks were carved by students, trying to recreate the appearance of Pueblo after visiting the ruins on field trips. But there was skepticism, even at that time, that any school or teacher would allow their students to conduct such an act of vandalism. 
The difficulties involved in dating stone and rock are well known to archaeologists, so it may not even be possible to answer the question of their age, but it would be nice if somebody at least gave it a try. In 2003, a group of teenagers playing with fireworks accidentally started a colossal wildfire that destroyed 250 acres of forest in Albuquerque, New Mexico, USA. One of the firefighters who was tasked with dealing with the blaze was Mark Chavez. After the fire was put out and Mark witnessed the devastation, he decided to try and make sure some good came of it. When he's not busy putting out fires, Mark is a chainsaw sculpture artist. He picked up his chainsaw, returned to the scene of the fire along the Paseo del Bosque Trail, and started turning the dead trees into works of art. His work references the natural beauty of the area, the appearance of the trail before the fire, but also the fire itself. He's created likenesses of eagles rising out of flames, beavers, coyotes, a depiction of the witch known as La Llorona in Mexican folklore, and a striking image of a firefighter standing on a slain dragon. Mark's unorthodox sculpture garden is in the Pueblo Montano trailhead of the Paseo del Bosque and is a fine place to come for a picnic. Happily, some of the flora that used to exist here has started to grow again in recent years. We've talked a little about burls that grow on the side of spruce trees. So now let's talk about an experiment involving spruce. This is the Marcel Experimental Forest in Bovi, Minnesota. It's public land, but it hosts a cutting-edge climate change study. The location was chosen because northern Minnesota is home to a series of carbon-rich peat bogs. With funding from the U.S. Department of Energy, the Marcel Experimental Forest comprises 10 open-top pods with differing ambient temperature settings. The idea is to study the effect of higher temperatures on the ecosystem of the peat bogs and the spruce trees that grow around them. The scientists there hope to gain insight into what the effects of higher temperatures will be as far as 100 years in the future. It's currently about halfway through an anticipated 10-year first phase of the experiment, after which more funding will be required if the study is to continue. With the data generated from the experiments and the insights they provide, we may be better able to make predictions and policy decisions in the future. Welch Spring Hospital was once a nature spa in Jadwin, Missouri, USA. Today, the hospital is both a ruin and a lasting monument to the failures that sometimes come with overly ambitious projects. Welch Spring was purchased by Dr. C. H. Deal in 1913 for $800. The doctor believed that the spring water had healing properties and that the pollen-free air that blew through the nearby caves would ease the symptoms of people with lung and breathing disorders. He believed that Welch Spring had cured his hay fever and wanted to extend the benefits to others by building a hospital over the mouth of the cave. What the ambitious doctor hadn't considered is that the area around Welch Spring had no public access other than a few dirt roads. The patients he expected to arrive simply never came, and when he passed away in 1940, his family had no interest in taking over the running of his spa. It's been abandoned ever since. But as of the 1960s, it's been a protected ecosystem. It's now a popular location for camping and canoe trips, so perhaps Dr. Deal's ideas were just too far ahead of their time. If you follow the historic Barnes Park Ferry Trail in Traverse City, Michigan, USA for long enough, you'll eventually reach a botanic garden complete with a giant bird's nest and a few ferry houses. There are between 40 and 50 ferry houses at the site, all of which were built from natural materials by local residents. The first of those houses was built by Heather and Jay Harrington, who were also responsible for the creation of the trail. They saw it as a way of celebrating the outdoors lifestyle that exists in northern Michigan. Visitors are welcome to complete the ferry house trail, but they have to arrive at the right time of year as the houses aren't there all the time. They're placed at the start of the summer and remain there until early fall, after which they're removed. When they're put back the following year, a few new designs usually accompany the older ones. As for the massive bird's nests, it was an Eagle Scout project that was created in 2015 and was expected to have fallen apart by now, 
but the Harringtons decided to repair and rejuvenate it each year as part of the reopening of the trail. Subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell, and enjoy watching new videos on my channel. Thanks for watching and see you soon!